Hey, it's Katie at the DMPC, and today we're going to walk you through the features and the setup of the FR7. The FR7 is the world's first full-frame cinematic camera with PTZ functions. Unlike traditional pan tilt zoom cameras, the FR7 has a full-size cinema sensor, you can shoot log, and it allows you to change lenses. Sony has more than 70 different E-mount lenses that you can choose from. You can choose a lens with a servo zoom to use the FR7 as a traditional pan tilt zoom, or you can choose a prime lens for shallow depth of field. For today's demo, we're going to use the 28 to 135 f4. The 28 to 135 features a servo zoom and allows you to use the FR7 as a standard pan tilt zoom camera. Some of my other favorite lenses to pair with the FR7 also include the 16 to 35 T3.1. The 16 to 35 has a servo zoom. We see this lens being used with the 28 to 135 for live events to capture wide shots. For shallow depth of field, I like the 85 1.4 G Master. For longer lens options, I like to use the 70 to 200 2.8 Mark II because it's lighter and doesn't telescope, so it won't affect balance. Since this lens doesn't have a servo zoom, you would not have zoom functionality with the FR7. Instead, you would set the zoom to the focal length desired. If you'd like a longer lens, you can add on Sony's 2 times teleconverter, which can double the focal length, making your lens a 140 to 400 millimeter. Now let's get into setting up the FR7. Step one, we're going to balance the camera. We keep the power unplugged so that all of the axis gears are disengaged while we do this. If the camera's axis are locked, you just flip this lever up to unlock it. I'm going to put the lens on by matching up the white dots. Release the foot to avoid it from getting stuck on the rods. Release the lever underneath the camera to slide it backwards on the plate. Balancing is fairly easy. Start by simply sliding it forward and backward until it falls at approximately the same speed both ways. Once you feel like you've reached a happy balance, keep the foot loose while you screw in the lens support bracket. You can slide the bracket by loosening the two side fasteners. Line up the lens support screw and lock it in. Then tighten up the fasteners to the rods. And finally, fasten on the foot to the lens. Plug the power in and it will initialize on its own. If the camera is not balanced, you will be able to feel the motors working overtime. If you haven't balanced your camera properly, when you power it on, it will start to try and initialize. If it can't, it will flash red. Like that. In that case, just pull the power and rebalance. For camera control, let's make sure our lens is set to AF slash MF to give us both autofocus and manual focus capabilities. Set the iris ring to A to make sure that we can change our iris remotely, and set the switch to servo to give us zoom control. Next, let's connect the camera to the controller. For control, you have three options. The IP500, this allows you to control pan, tilt, zoom, and you can control up to 100 cameras with a single controller. The iPad, or a tablet, computer, or phone, allows you to control one camera and touch where you want the lens to focus. Finally, when everything else fails, you have the IR remote, which doesn't require any setup. To set up our configuration today, we will need three network cables, one network switch, an iPad with an RJ45 adapter, and the IP500 remote. I'm going to plug a network cable into the LAN port of the camera head, and then into the switch. I'm going to do the same thing with the LAN port of the IP500 remote, and then into the switch. Then the iPad goes into the same switch. Because I just received this FR7 from another production, I'm going to reset it so I can go in and change its IP address to whatever fits into our network scheme. To reset camera settings and network settings, flip dip switch number one to on. I'm going to use my paperclip. Then use your handy paperclip to push and hold in on reset for a few seconds. And then pull power. 
Continue holding the reset button as you plug power back in. You will continue to hold the reset button until after the camera initializes. To reset only network settings and leave the camera settings unchanged, be sure to flip the dip switch down to the off position. After a couple minutes, the camera will power back off, then back on again. Once the power network lights are lit green, use your iPad to scan the QR code of the camera located just inside the media slot door. If for some reason your camera is not recognizing the link, you can just type it in manually using the link just above the QR code. A screen will appear on the web browser asking you for the username and password. The default is admin as the username and leave password blank. From there, it takes you to an access authentication page where you can set the user and password. After you hit OK, it will take you to the camera control login page. Just type in your new username and password. Then it will run you through some initial setups like time and date. After you hit OK, it will take you to the live screen and you will have web access. Now let's set up the IP address. Go to Settings, then Network, then Wired LAN. Scroll down to IPv4. Notice the switch is turned on for DHCP. For our purposes, we want to do everything manually, so let's turn that off. By doing that, it gives you a default IP address, subnet mask, and gateway. I want to change the IP address so that my IP500 remote will recognize it. To check the remote's IP using the IP500 menus, push RM menu, scroll to config using the select knob, then push into select config, scroll to LAN, and select. I see that my remote is 192.168.0.10. Let's align the FR7 and iPad to that. You can set the last two digits to whatever you want as long as it is not being used by another device on the network. I'm going to set my IP address on the FR7 to 192.168.0.20 and select OK. To change the iPad IP, let's go into General Settings. Go to Ethernet, select USB 10 100 LAN, select Configure IP, and make sure it is in Manual. Then change the IP address of the iPad to align with your scheme. I'm going to change mine to 192.168.0.30. Make sure your subnet mask also matches your FR7. On your iPad, go back to your browser. If the image is black or not responding, just refresh the page and it should come back up. At our IP500 remote, you should see one of the numbers in the camera selection area light up as blue if it recognizes a camera in that slot. If it is not blue, then we need to back out to the main menu and access Auto IP Setup. Select Setup IP. The IP500 will search all compatible devices on the network. Scroll to Setup IP and then use the Value knob to toggle to Execute and select In using the Value knob. This will tell you to wait a few seconds before you can proceed. This is so you don't accidentally change the wrong setting. Once the prompt disappears, you will be able to use the Value knob to confirm by toggling to Yes and pushing in on the knob. Once it says complete, done, push the cancel button to back out to the auto IP setup menu, then scroll to assign camera. Select which group number and camera number you would like to assign. Scroll to keep IP using the value knob, toggle to execute, select in. It takes you to a screen that asks you to wait a few seconds, and after that prompt disappears, toggle to yes and select. The camera button should light up blue that have been assigned. An orange button indicates which camera is being controlled. On our IP500 remote, we can adjust our pan and tilt settings a few different ways. From the IP500 itself, we can change directions of the joystick by going to Config, then Direction. 
using the select knob, we toggle to different functions and we use the value knob to change the direction within each function. Select in using the value knob. You can change the assignable buttons using the SW Assign menu. Using the Maintenance menu, you can change the joystick sensitivity by scrolling to Joystick, then use the Value knob to change the sensitivity. There are also physical knobs that will adjust the sensitivity of the joystick, as well as sensitivity knobs for focus and the zoom rocker. To adjust even deeper pan tilt functions, let's go to the browser interface. We're going to go to settings and pan slash tilt. From there, you can change speed, acceleration, range, limit, direction, and adjust preset speeds. Now let's go into presets. Presets are common with other PTZ cameras and are a powerful advantage over our traditional cinema line cameras. You can set movement presets and you can set focus presets. To set a preset from our iPad, go to Live. On the left, there is a plus button. By pushing this, you are selecting a particular position and focus point as a preset mark. Adjust to a new position and hit the plus button again. This is a new preset mark. To go back and forth between presets, you can either select the More menu indicated with three small dots in the top right corner of the thumbnail and select Recall. From that same menu, you can select the speed of the preset. Do this by tapping speed. You can either scroll to 1, which is the slowest, or 50, which is the fastest. Another method to set and recall presets is by using the IP500. To store a preset from the remote, turn off Direct Recall, select the number you want to store, push the Store button. You can now quickly access presets created on both the browser or the remote. You can either select the preset number and then recall, or you can turn on direct recall and quickly select the preset number to immediately recall the move. If you would like to go back to the home position, you can push and hold the button on top of the joystick. If you change lenses or the camera gets bumped or the camera starts flashing red for some reason, you need to initiate a pan tilt reset. You can do this by pushing and holding the button on the IP500, or by selecting the More section on the right-hand side of the live feed in the browser. This is indicated by the three dots. From there, you can select Pan Tilt Reset. Let's talk about a few other settings in the browser interface. Let's go to Settings, then Monitoring. From here, you can adjust the output format, and you can turn off on-screen displays for the SDI and the HDMI live stream. When the on-screen displays are turned on, you can also see the camera menus, which will be slightly different from the browser menus. You can access other things like focus shift and sensitivity. You can access these by selecting Cam GUI in the bottom right and then select Menu. You can use the arrows and set button to toggle through the camera menus. If you're using autofocus capable lenses, you can also tap to focus using the browser interface. It will not only pull focus, but can subject track as well. These settings can be adjusted by going into the camera menus, go to shooting, then focus. If you would like to learn more about focus settings, check out the FX3101 where we dive into autofocus. From the browser interface, you can also change your ND, base ISO and EI, color temperature, zoom, iris, and frame rate. To put our camera to sleep, you can either select standby from the top left drop down menu, or you can push cam power on the IP500 remote. I hope one day you can join us at the DMPC, but until then, be sure to share this with your buddies and colleagues because a rising tide lifts all boats.